Hey guys, I'm Omi from mozimac.com and today I have a tutorial for all y'all on Keynote, which is the Apple equivalent of PowerPoint, which is available in the iWorks suite. Later on, I'll have a tutorial on how to make professional slideshows and even how to use Keynote for some graphical editing as well as some video production, so it's a sneaky little trick that I don't like to tell people. So let's go ahead and launch Keynote, and uh, this is for the latest version of Keynote, Keynote 09, which is part of the 79 US dollar iWork suite, but it's more or less the same for older versions of Keynote as well. Now, the first screen that you get with Keynote is the theme chooser, and with the uh, theme chooser in Keynote 09, you get a long list of professionally designed themes. And you can go through and you can uh, skim through the themes to see what it looks like with uh, different slides. You know, picture slides, picture and text slides, with charts. And uh, then you can go ahead and choose a theme. Or you can just choose a white or black theme and design your own. For demonstration purposes, I'm just going to go with the simple showroom theme. Then, down here, you notice there is a slide size drop. Basically what it is, is it lets you set the resolution of the presentation that you're working on. So, let's say you're showing it on your widescreen Mac, and you want to choose a full widescreen resolution. Let's say that you're showing it on a decently, I don't know what the word is, resolutionized projector or something that's not widescreen. You want to go ahead and choose this one. You know, so it's a really nice feature to have it right there on the theme chooser. Let's just go ahead and press choose. I've selected my slide size and I've selected my theme. But this is the default editor of Kino. Now there are some things I need to explain that we need to get out of the way before you can start using Kino. If you're used to PowerPoint on the PC, or even PowerPoint on the Mac, this is very, very different. So, like any Mac application, you have this menu bar up here at the top, which is, gives you access to many, many of the important functions, and I'll talk about some of these over here, including iWork.com later. But this one, this button right here, Inspector, is one of the most important buttons that you will ever, ever have, because it brings up one of the most important palettes that you can ever have in this program. The inspector is this little floating window that uh, only shows up when you're selected in the application and the inspector has these tabs at the top that let you do anything with your presentation. So you click on the document tab and you see that you can set the slide size and all the settings for the that specific presentation. There's animations, there's text palette, not a font palette, I'll talk about that later. There's um, the graphical palette, the measurements, charts, um, hyperlinks, and QuickTime. And sooner or later, you know, at first it's going to be an absolute pain just to know where things are, but sooner or later it's all part of your muscle memory and you'll be doing things really, really quickly. And then you have this format bar up here. And then of course you have the slide viewer which shows you thumbnails of all your slides on the side over here. And on that sidebar you can also put the master slides, the master slide editors, but I don't want that. That's really the main bits of the interface for now. Um, but there are some other bits that I'll talk about as we move along. But, um, you know, now that you know this interface, how exactly do you use Kino? Well, I'm going to show you some uh, first basic text manipulation. So I'm going to go into this uh, placeholder here, and I'm going to type my title. So, Mosey Mac International Meeting. And you can see that the text is big, and um, it's gone on to two lines. 
How can I fix this? Well, there are some tools up here on this format bar that let me change the font and change the look of the text box to uh, make it, and uh, I can use this to make it fit. So make the font a little bit smaller, for example. But if I press the command key, which if you have an older Mac is the Apple logo, and if you have a newer Mac, it's that squiggly square thing. I'm not really sure how to describe it. If I press that key and T at the same time, I bring up this font palette that I'm sure you've seen before. And in this font palette, I can go through and I can look through all the fonts to change the font. Not really like in this font. Shrink the font size a little bit with the slider. And then I can go into Inspector, use the text tab, and space out the characters a little bit. Shrink the text again. You see it's all in this nice palette interface. So I'm not going into a menu, resize, another menu, character space, whatever. It saves you a lot of time. Now let's say I want to throw a picture into this, for example. So I can uh, drag my picture in from the Finder or from the desktop, but it also has a media viewer, a lot like the iLife applications, which let me take pictures from my iPhoto or my photo booth. So let's just browse through my events. and Let's take a photo from my trip to the beach in Kamakura. Guy with an orange hat. Not really relevant to Mosey Mac, but it's a photo. And you know, now I want to I want to change this photo a little bit. I can try to give it an alpha, which means I can remove the background just by clicking this tool up here, Instant Alpha. And when I click Instant Alpha, it changes my mouse to this cross and I can select a color and I just simply drag my mouse over that color and it will highlight and remove it. This usually works with solid colors and I'm trying to remove trees in the background so it's not working very well. If you want to undo it, simply press the regular undo keys and it will undo it bit by bit. And mask the shape by simply pressing this mask button or I can mask with shape, so let's say I want to put these guys in an oval. There we go. Or I can use this adjust palette up here, the same sort of image editing tools that are available in iPhoto. And now let's add in some animation. I can do this by simply going back into the inspector. You notice we're using the inspector again. We're having all these palettes, so there's no menus to dip into, they're always view. And I just choose this diamond with the this moving diamond tab. And um, now I can choose some animations. The animations are really nice and, uh, you know, they're very professional looking. I can also do this for text, so I select my text box, I can choose a uh, choose an animation, and now if I press more options, this is where I can set the timing and the order for animation. So let's go ahead and send the picture behind the text, change the text color, and give it an animation, so we can squish. Select the picture, bring this picture back here, and um, have the picture go automatically after the text comes in, have the text on click. Sorry, let's have the picture go with it. There we go, so it's all simple and done in this palette. So that's the basics of the uh, Keynote interface. Next tutorial, I'll be showing you how to actually make a presentation. And then after that, I'll be showing you how you can use Keynote for some uh, graphic design as well as some video production animation effects stuff. Yes, you heard me correctly. Um, 
I'm only from ogmac.com, and I hope you enjoyed this rather unscripted tutorial.